We've just talked about the first item. Now we will talk about one aspect of the grid control, the possibility to change the design of each row so that they can be displayed with one of the various designs available as needed. We will see it with an example. After selecting a speaker from the grid by tapping on it, instead of calling the detail, we see it here, we want to show part of the speaker's resume. And this arrow here, so that tapping on it calls the speaker's detail. Therefore, we need two layouts for each item or line of the grid, one that is used when the line is not selected, and another one to use when it is selected. To this end, in the upper right corner of the grid, a context menu is displayed that allows us, by clicking here, to add a new layout for the item. The first menu option allows us to select the layout that we want to edit each time. Here, to the default layout, we've added a second layout called Selected, which, as we were saying, includes the speaker's image and resume. So far, we've defined it. Now when the line is selected, when it's tapped on, we have to make it use the second layout instead of the first one. That is to say, use the one we've called Selected instead of the one called Layout. This is indicated with the grid property Default Selected Item Layout. Note that here we're indicating that the layout value we want to load when it's selected is the selected one instead of the other one. However, when we tap on the line to select it, as we had seen by default, its behavior was to take us to the detail of that speaker. So now, we will need to disable this behavior because now the tap will only be used to select the line and show this new layout, selected. We don't want it to automatically call the detail in that case. Where do we configure the action to run by tapping on a line? In the default action property of the grid. The default value is to call the detail, so we will change it to none. In this way, no event will be invoked as a result of tapping on the line. What it will do is simply load the other layout, the selected one. Let's see it in Genexus. This is work with speaker in edit mode in the list node, the emulator running and live editing listening. If we open the Live Inspector window, here's the screen we're viewing. Good. So, note that in this KB, I've created the two layouts to save time. And if we click on the right part of the grid, we see the option in the context menu we've mentioned before to add new layouts, or select one among the existing ones. We see layout 1 being displayed, or choose the other one, called selected, which shows the resume. Here is this image that I've added, so we're viewing this layout. If we open the properties, we see that I've indicated that the default value was the selected layout. In this way, when I select a line, this layout will be loaded instead of the other one. At the same time, in the default action, Note that I've changed the default option. The default value called the work with detail node, and I've changed it to none, so here we could have solved the layout one or none. Now, when the user taps on the image, we want to invoke the speaker's detail. This image corresponds to a control in the layout that I've called arrow. So we'll see that right clicking on the control, go to event, we will display all these touch events associated with the control that we can program. For example, the tap that will be useful to us, we click here and see that it takes us to the events tab of the list node for us to program an action. And the commands we want to run by tapping on that control called arrow. 
what do we want to do when the user taps on that arrow? Well, call the work with speaker of the detail node. To do so, we will drag it. What happens when we tap on what we have programmed so far? The selected layout is being loaded, showing the speaker's resume. And if I tap on the arrow, nothing happens. Now we remove the comments. We've been calling a work with component. As we've said, the work with contains the list and detail objects. Every work with component has a level. In this case, there's only one, the detail node, and it's the one we want to call. We must send it the speaker ID, so we select it to avoid making a typing mistake. We will see what happens now with the emulator. When we tap on the element, it calls the detail of the selected speaker. Once again, we see that the Live Inspector is enabled, and a client event that will be run on the device itself without even saving the work with component. In this case, it's running exactly as we wanted. So we save. So, just tapping on the live editing feature allows us to listen to the user events. Now it's possible to load one line or another, one layout or another in the grid according to what we want to program. It can be done at runtime. That is to say, we will be able to specify which layout we want to load for a line at runtime with the grid name, period, item, layout. Let's see it with an example. Here is the transaction that records the sessions. Next to it is the list of sessions, work with sessions, grouped by date, as we can see. We want a session to be a keynote, and in addition to the track information that can be seen there, the rooms in which the session will take place, the session's name, and the speakers that will give it. We also want to show a summary of its description, as we can see in this case. This will be a keynote, so we will have to define a new layout, which contains that additional information, and load one layout or the other depending on whether the session is a keynote. To do so, we will have to load the data at runtime because it will depend on the line to be loaded every time on that grid. What we will do in the load event, the event where each line of the grid is loaded, is ask if the session is a keynote, and then we will load the layout that we've called keynote. Otherwise, the default layout will be loaded. Note that the property default selected item layout is set to none. Let's see it in Genexus. Here we've already entered not only the session transaction and the work with component, but also all the other ones we will need later to implement our event day application, such as the restaurants, rooms, and so on. So we open the session transaction, We select the pattern section, and we go to the list. And here we see that we have layout 1, the default one. And we also have the keynote already implemented. If we select the events, we will see that I've programmed the load event of grid 1. In this case, since this work with element has only one grid we could have used, as we will see later when we talk about the events, the load event directly. There was no need to specify the grid because there's only one. Anyway, we decided to type grid one period load. Here we see that among all the things being done, we ask if the session is a keynote. And if so, we load the layout corresponding to the keynote. Here's something interesting before showing you this. 
I open the emulator and go back. Note that I've added the section item to the dashboard. This is how what we've programmed is displayed at runtime. The colors we have here are loaded according to the track's color. Each track will have a color. If I go to the track update, we see that I've created a color domain and a track class edit attribute. Here we're obtaining the tracks and their color. This color we've set here will allow us to display the sessions with the colors corresponding to their track. This is done with the classes we had defined and that I showed in another class. This is the class of the simple Android theme that we've been using. Here, the class is changing dynamically. We've achieved this color effect. You will be able to see this later on. Basically in this way, we can dynamically load the layout we're interested in. Lastly, note that the grid properties include the selection type property, which allows indicating the desired behavior when a grid line is selected. Look at the values displayed down there. This behavior will depend on each one of them and on whether a layout other than the default one has been defined in the default selected item layout property, as well as on the value of the default action. Here, for example, with the option keep selection while executing, the line remains selected until the default action ends. It remains selected to show the color that should be displayed there, the configured highlighted background color of the grid class, of the class that has the grid associated with it. This table shows the expected behavior according to each property value. We will not go into further detail here. You'll be able to study them by visiting the wiki and looking for the selection type property. We've discussed the possibility to create several layouts for the lines of a grid and select which one will be loaded each time. At the same time, we've seen how to configure the selection's characteristics. In the next item, we will talk about changing each control's type so that they look and behave in a different way than the default one.